Hey guys, today I'm going to make a prediction for the 2024 presidential election between the two parties' respective frontrunners, the Democratic frontrunner Kamala Harris and the Republican frontrunner for 2024 Donald Trump. Now, by frontrunner for the Democratic Party, I do mean with the exception of Joe Biden, because if Joe Biden, the incumbent Democratic president, does run for re-election in 2024, there won't really be a Democratic primary. So, with the exception of Joe Biden, uh, Kamala Harris is currently the undisputed Democratic frontrunner for the 2024 nomination. Every single poll puts her in front of the field uh, if Joe Biden is not included. If Joe Biden is in the poll, as you can see, Kamala Harris does not do as well. However, with every single poll in which Kamala Harris um, if Joe Biden is not included, Kamala Harris is clearly the front runner, typically followed by Bernie Sanders. So um, Kamala Harris right now has the highest chance of winning the Democratic primary with the exception of the incumbent president. For the GOP, Donald Trump, uh, the former president, is still the front runner for the GOP nomination. He leads uh, by 40 points against Ron DeSantis in a head to head matchup. Uh, but he leads in every single poll in which he is included. If he is not, it is typically Mike Pence or Ron DeSantis that lead in polls without Donald Trump. So definitely the former president still plays a big role in the future of the Republican Party. So I'm going to start off with this prediction by filling in the solid Democratic and Republican states, starting off with the solid Democratic states for Kamala Harris, starting off with the state of Washington, California, and Hawaii. In the state of Oregon, I don't think she'll be able to win this state by a solid margin. 2020, Joe Joe Biden won it barely by 16.1%, and in 2016, Hillary Clinton only won the state by 11%, so this state I will have to categorize later as a likely state. In the state of Illinois, I do think that Kamala Harris can hold on. Um, Obama's 2012 margin, Hillary Clinton's margin, as well as Joe Biden's margin were both around 17-18% here in the state of Illinois. Um, I don't think it will go under 15% for Kamala Harris in 2024. New York, I have solid as well, along the states of Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. The 1st District of Maine is also going to be solid as well, along the states of Maryland and the District of Columbia. So this was Kamala Harris up at 156 electoral votes for her solid states. Now for Donald Trump, you have the typical uh, states here in the middle of the country that vote very solidly for the Republican Party. I will include the 1st District of Nebraska as solid for Donald Trump in this map. He won the state by 14.9% in 2020, um, but definitely it will go up to over 15% in 2024. Now the states of Kansas, Missouri, and and Montana. All three of these states, I think, will almost be likely states. I think that he will barely win them by 15%, maybe 16 to 17 percentage points at best um, in these three states, but I think that they will nonetheless still vote by solid margins, just barely, though, for the former president. Uh, and the states here in the Deep South, you know, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, all going to be very, very solid margins for the GOP, 20-30% margins. Same thing in North and South Dakota. Mississippi will be a little bit closer, but still a solid margin. Alabama as well, along with these states of Tennessee, Kentucky and West Virginia. All these states going to be solid for the Republican Party and Donald Trump in 2024. <clears throat> And so now I'm going to fill in the likely states here for Kamala Harris, um, starting off with the state of Oregon and its eight electoral votes. Again, this was a state that Joe Biden barely won by a solid margin. I think that she, uh, Kamala Harris in 2024 will not do as well, a little bit less, but still definitely going to win this state and its eight electoral votes. Now, moving here eastward, I have the state of New Jersey as likely for Kamala Harris as well, along with the state of New Jersey. Now, for both of these states, I do think that Kamala Harris will 100% win these two states uh, like Joe Biden did in 2020. He won both of them by solid margins, 19% in his home state of Delaware and 15.9% in New Jersey. This 15.9% um, I think was a little bit weak for Joe Biden in a state like New Jersey. 2016, Hillary Clinton only won the state by 14% and in the state of Delaware, Clinton only won by 11%. So um, without Kamala Harris having any, you know, um, ties to the state of Delaware like Joe Biden does, I think that she will do a little bit weaker in the state of Delaware as well as in the state of New Jersey, putting both of these states as likely states for the Democratic Party. And along with that, I have the state of Virginia and its 13 electoral votes as the state, um, as another likely state here for Kamala Harris, putting her up at 194 electoral votes. This state in 2020 was won by Joe Biden by 10.1%. Uh, in 2016, 
it was won by 5.3% for Hillary Clinton, even though she was running with Tim Kaine, who was a senator from the state, also former governor of the state. So Hillary Clinton definitely did pretty poorly in Virginia in 2016, but 2020, Joe Biden did very well. I think Kamala Harris will be able to keep that margin over 7%, but I don't think that it'll be double digits for her. Um, if you look at the 2012 margin, it was just 3.9 for Obama. In 2008, it was the first time that the Democrats flipped it here in the 21st century, with Obama winning it by 6.3%. If you look back, 2004, 2000, 1996, 1992, all, you know, a long Republican streak here in the state of Virginia. The state has only recently, after 2008, become a Democratic state as the state becomes bluer and bluer. Um, so this will put Kamala Harris at 194, and then Colorado and New Mexico's additional 15 electoral votes puts her up at 209 electoral votes. So in these states of Colorado and New Mexico, both states that Hillary Clinton won in 2016 uh, by lean and likely margins. So in Colorado, it's only 4.9, 8.2 in the state of New Mexico. But in 2020, Joe Biden won it by 13.5 up in Colorado and 10.8 in New Mexico. So there's really no doubt that these two states are going to be likely for Kamala Harris. I don't think Kamala Harris will do better than Joe Biden, but I think that she will nonetheless win both these states of Colorado and New Mexico. So this puts Kamala Harris at 209 with her likely states. And now I'm going to fill in the likely states for the former president. So starting off with the state of Indiana, I have this as a likely state for Donald Trump. I think that without Mike Pence on the ticket, the margin will drop a little bit. It was 16% for him in 2020, 2024 without Mike Pence, I think that number can go under 15. In the state of South Carolina, it's nine electoral votes. I will also give to Donald Trump. He won the state by likely margins in both 2016 and 2020. And same thing goes with the state of Alaska, a state that Donald Trump has performed relatively poor in for a Republican president. Uh, 10% in 2020, 2016, 14%. You go back to 2008, this was a margin of 21%. Uh, you go uh, all the way back to 2000, Bush won by 31%. So definitely some pretty weak margins for the former president in the state of Alaska in his two elections. However, I think that he will definitely be able to hold on to the state along with South Carolina and Indiana, where I expect similar margins. Um, now, there are two states that are three states that I have to fill in here as well that are going to be a little bit on the weaker side. But before that, I'm going to fill in the second district of Maine as likely for Donald Trump. I think that he'll be able to hold on to the second district of Maine here. So in these states of Iowa, Ohio and Texas, I have these, th these three states as on the lower end of the spectrum in terms of being likely states around seven to nine percent. Well, these of Indiana, South Carolina, and Alaska I have on the higher end of the spectrum for likely states at around, you know, 12 to 15 percent. So I'm going to fill in first the states of Iowa and Ohio, both of these states in the Rust Belt. Um, you know, in the Rust Belt, it's really interesting uh, because of how well that Donald Trump has been able to do both in 2016 and in 2020 in this particular region. If you look at the general election results of 2004 um, as well as 2000, you'll see the Rust Belt was relatively split. The Democratic Party did have um, more control in the Rust Belt. Uh, they lost a little bit in 2004 by losing Iowa, but in 2008, with the election of Barack Obama, the entire Rust Belt was all blue. This was a region of the United States, especially the upper Rust Belt, that had voted for the Democratic Party for 20, 30 years. Uh, Michigan had not, or Wisconsin had not voted for a Republican since the 80s. And I mean, looking at the Southern Rust Belt here as well, you'll see Barack Obama carried every single state in the Rust Belt. He won Michigan by 16.5%, Pennsylvania by double digits, Wisconsin by 14 percentage points. Minnesota by 10%. He won Iowa by almost 10%. Um, he even won the state of Indiana for the first time in a very long time for the Democratic Party. This was definitely a big win for him, but if you look, you know, 2012, Barack Obama loses the state of Indiana by 10%. This was a big blow to the Democratic Party in the state, but Mitt Romney was, you know, heavily favored in that state going into that election, so not too surprising. But Obama still maintained some pretty strong margins throughout the Rust Belt. You fast forward four years, and Donald Trump completely takes over the Rust Belt. The entire blue wall here, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, all by tilt margins of less than 1%. They all vote for the GOP. In the states of Ohio and Iowa, 9.4% and 8.1%. You go to 2012, Ohio voted for Barack Obama by 3%, and Iowa by 5.8%. 2016, the state of Iowa almost shifted 15 points to the right in one election. In the state of Ohio, it was almost 11%, 12%. So definitely a major shift for Donald Trump in the state. I mean, Indiana's margin doubled in 2016 for the GOP. In 2020, Joe Biden was able to reclaim the upper Rust Belt by, you know, small margins, 1%, 2%, um, less than 1% in Wisconsin. But he still lost Ohio and Iowa by the exact same margins, essentially. Um, went down 0.1% in Ohio and went down around 1% in Iowa. 
Iowa. So these margins relatively stay the same in these two states. 2024 is going to be no different. Kamala Harris is not going to win or even get close to winning in Iowa or Ohio. And then finally, here in the state of Texas, it's 40 electoral votes I have going for Donald Trump. Um, in the state, um, in 2020, he only won it by 5.6%. 2016, he won the state by 9%. Um, 2008, I mean, this was won by 11% by John McCain. In 2012, 16% for Mitt Romney. So, this is a state that has voted for the Democratic Party for a very long time, but Donald Trump has done relatively poorly here for a Republican in a state that they've been winning since 1980. The last time a Democrat won in Texas was in 1976 with the election of Jimmy Carter. This was the final time um, that the Democratic Party won the entirety of the South, with the next time being around 1992 with Bill Clinton, and 1996 this was really the last time that the Democratic Party had a major uh, major wins in the South, but only in states of Arkansas and Louisiana. Um, but, you know, this was a region where Bill Clinton was from. The last time the Democrats really ever won the South was with Jimmy Carter, who is, of course, from the state of Georgia. So in 2020, Trump only won the state by 5.6%. In 2024, I think that he'll be able to push that up over 7% against Kamala Harris, who I, do, who I do think is a weaker candidate. So this puts Trump up at 189 electoral votes to Kamala Harris's 209 electoral votes, with both their solid and likely states uh, filled in on this map. I'm now going to move on and categorize the lean states for both of these candidates. Starting off with the lean states for Kamala Harris, we have the at-large vote here in the state of Maine, as well as the states of Minnesota and New Hampshire. So in both these states, um, similar stories here in 2016 and 2020. For 2020, Joe Biden won both of these states by 7%, 7.4 in New Hampshire and 7.1 in Minnesota. 2016, Clinton does horribly in both these states. These are states that have voted for the Democratic Party for a very long time now. In the state of New Hampshire, Clinton wins it by 0.3%. In Minnesota, 1.5%. So two very weak margins. I think Kamala Harris will go somewhere in the middle there at around 4 to 5%. Um, it won't be as weak as Hillary Clinton's horrible margins from 2016, but it will not be as strong as Joe Biden's margin in 2020. So this puts Kamala Harris up at 225 electoral votes. For Donald Trump, I have two lean states on this map as well, those being the states of North Carolina and Florida. So 16 electoral votes from the state of North Carolina and 30 from the state of Florida. North Carolina is a state that the Democratic Party has been trying to re-win again for a very long time. They won it in 2008 with Barack Obama, winning the state by 0.3%. I mean, the last time a Democrat won in North Carolina was 1976 with the election of Jimmy Carter. Um, this, of course, is between uh, before Barack Obama's win in 2000. So um, they won it in 1976 and they won it in 2008. Uh, but since then, they have not been able to win. I mean, the state before this, 2004, voted for Bush by 12%. Obama really was able to shift this state to the left, you know, in a big way. I mean, 2012, it was 2% for Romney. Um, 2016, 3.7% for Trump. And 2020, a margin of 1.3%. So definitely, the state is not nearly as conservative as it was before, but it definitely is not close to flipping at this point. Uh, with the Republican Party still being able, able to edge out the Democratic Party. I mean, on the Senate level as well, Tom Tillis won his re-election against Cal Cunningham in 2020. Um, 2016, you saw Richard Burr win by 5.7%. So the state is still narrowly more Republican, and that's why the, the Republican Party is going to hold on to it. In Florida as well, 30 electoral votes. This state has been trending more and more to the right uh, with Ron DeSantis, you know, um, Marco Rubio, as well as Tim Scott winning the governorship and the two Senate seats. All with Trump winning the state of Florida by 3.4%, um, larger than Barack Obama's 2008 margin of 2.8%. So... Here in the state of Florida, I think that it, will, it won't be too good for Kamala Harris. Um, I don't think... Uh, she will do too well here, uh, but definitely uh, it will be a win for Donald Trump. So this puts both candidates at around 230 electoral votes. And these final tilt states are going to decide the outcome of this election. So I'm going to start off with the state of Nevada and its six electoral votes that I am going to give to Donald Trump. The Democratic Party has been performing relatively weak here um, in both 2016 and 2020. I think that Donald Trump against Kamala Harris, who I don't think will do too well in the state, I do think that Donald Trump will be able to flip Nevada and win its six electoral votes. I also do think that in the state of Arizona, Donald Trump will be able to do pretty well here. Um, this was a state that he won in 2016, I mean, by a margin of 3.5%. He then lost it in 2020 by 0.3% uh, from Joe Biden, who won the state, you know, for the first time since 1996 for a Democrat. The last time this state was won by a Democrat was Bill Clinton in 1996 
with a margin of 2.2%. Um, in 2022, for I think that Donald Trump will be able to do much better than he did in 2020 in the state and be able to flip it back uh, for the Democratic Party. Now, moving eastward here, I will also be giving Donald Trump the state of Wisconsin and its 10 electoral votes. I do think that in the state of Wisconsin, uh, it will be a very, very close race like it was in 2016. But Trump won the state of Wisconsin by a larger margin in 2016 than Joe Biden in 2020. And in 2024, um, I'm not too confident in Kamala Harris in the state. However, I do think that in both these states of Michigan and Pennsylvania, she will be able to pull out victories in both of these states. You know, both these, all three of these states are going to be very, very close. They will essentially decide the outcome of this election, um, but I think that these two states will end up voting more for the Democratic Party. So both candidates are at around 10 electoral votes away from winning this election. And now the final state on this map is, of course, the state of Georgia and its 16 electoral votes. I think that for Kamala Harris, she will be able to turn out the black vote here. I think that she will be able to, like Joe Biden, win the state for a second time in a row for the Democratic Party, a state that has not voted Democrat before 2020 since 1992 uh, with Bill Clinton who won it by 0.5%. 2020, Biden won it by 0.2%. So 2024, I think Kamala Harris will be able to hold on to the state of Georgia with a tilt margin and win her the presidential election with 275 electoral votes to Donald Trump's 262 electoral votes. Um, actually, 263 electoral votes because I did forget to give Donald Trump here the second district of Nebraska. So 275 for Kamala Harris and 263 for Donald Trump. So this is my 2024 presidential election prediction between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, 275 to 273. Um, it's really going to come out to these, you know, these five states that decided the 2020 general election, these states of Arizona, Georgia, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. These really are the three closest states uh, from 2020. And I think that 2024, not too much will change. And these, you know, five states will have a major role once again in assigning the outcome of the next election. Um, in the second district of Nebraska with redistricting and, you know, favoring the GOP more, um, I do think that Kamala Harris will lose the second district of Nebraska by a tilt margin to Donald Trump just because of the fact um, that redistricting has expanded the district to the area, you know, further outside of Omaha, which is where the Democrats get their votes from in Nebraska. So um, I think that it, because of that, the state of Nebraska will be, uh, the second district of Nebraska will be red in 2024. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to like it down below if you enjoyed it subscribe to my channel if you have not comment down below which party you think is going to win in 2024 and if you think Kamala Harris will be able to defeat the former president uh, like this video again if you haven't and I'll see you guys in the next one